People who are 40 plus and happy with their life. What is your advice to people in their 20s? I hesitate to give advice, being unqualified to do so. Instead, here are some points that may or may not be worthy of consideration. 1. Time is very short, and as you get older it speeds up more and more. 2. Time is more important than money. In theory, you could end up a billionaire, but nobody is ever a time billionaire, rich or poor. You're gonna get maybe 100 years at the absolute max, and probably not that much. 3. There will be several versions of you as you walk your path, but one version that kind of colors all the other versions. This version you could call the real you. It pays to spend time figuring out who that real you is. 4. You will have to deal with people. Learn how to leave them happy to have been in your presence, and you will not lack for friends and loved ones. 5. Speaking of loved ones, just because someone is a blood relative, it doesn't mean they are worth a sh- If your parent, sibling, or child is a complete a-hole and worthy of your attention, don't waste further time on them. 6. Find something you love to do, and do that. Do it every day, it doesn't matter if you make money at it, or get recognition because of it. Do it like Henry Dodger did his writing and drawing, and like Vivian Ma did her photography. Do good work, it is its own reward. 7. I am a geezer, 64 years old. It does not have to suck being old, I think it's effing great, for many reasons. If you're ever in my town, drop by and get on my lawn. Don't fall for the trap that your life needs to be one long narrative that you should be building. Life is best when it's a bunch of happy moments that just happen to be connected. Don't try to make your life into a novel. Make it a book of poems. Chris Rock said it best, now. People tell you life is short. No, it's not. Life is long, especially if you make the wrong decisions. It's never too late to start again. All in my 20s I thought I couldn't just restart my career or dump a useless boyfriend or go back to school because I was already on a certain trajectory. Made my choices now I gotta make the best of it. That's total bullsh. You have no idea how incredibly young you are and how much time you have to do whatever you want to do. When I figured this out, I found the man of my dreams. Had a kid in my late late 30s. Dropped my entire career in my late 40s and starting a new one at 50 and it's awesome. This is good advice. I'm 40 and have reset twice. Starting something new can be scary, but very rewarding. I left a job last year for a different company and am so glad that I did. I took a pay cut for a quality of life improvement. I've been much happier and my stress levels are pretty non-existent. Maintain your friendships. In 20 years you will be so grateful for those people who saw you through marriages, children, illness and health. People who will go for a trip with you. Love your kids. Remember you as a young person. Friends are essential but they require work. Don't be alone just because you don't want to be the person who reaches out to others. When I was in college, I had the chance to go to Europe but I passed because I had to work at a warehouse. I picked staying at a part-time warehouse job overseeing the world. When I finally went abroad in my 30s, it changed my perspective about everything and everyone. Go to another country that is far away and different than your own. Cries in COVID-19. It won't last forever. I'm 46, and here's what I know. 1. Money is important but it's not the end all be all. It will not listen to your problems or hug you when you need it to. Watch your weight, your blood pressure, and do not smoke. 75% of my patients that have the most serious diagnosis have at least one of these factors. 3. Comparison will rob you of joy. Be happy for others, but don't feel you need to be like them. 4. Let go of the little things. Stress will kill you. 5. Chase your dreams. Life goes by so fast, you don't want to be 80 years old and regretting not traveling. Pursuing your passion. ETC 6. You cannot change someone, whether a friend or a partner. Their faults will not get better and you cannot rescue them. Don't waste your life on toxic people. 7. Make a point of performing kind acts for others. It will greatly enrich your life. Now, go get your life. Relax more. Don't get angry over little things. This, relax and don't get overly angry. While others talk about material things or experiences the real lesson is to accept that things won't always go the way you want them to and that's okay. Didn't marry your perfect spouse? 
that person doesn't exist align expectations to reality and appreciate those who love you for who they are, or find new people, didn't buy the perfect car, oh, well, it still gets you where you're going, define your criteria for the next one and work towards it, didn't get the perfect house, probably not, but it's yours and you can fix it, didn't get that promotion, don't be so sure it would have worked out the way you think it would have, vacation wasn't perfect, are you sure about that? Or were your expectations too high? Point is, relax, enjoy the ride, work to your goals but remember none of it matters if you can't enjoy it along the way. I've had a build up of anxiety for a while and this actually calmed me down a bit. Thanks, I'm in my 30s and my new motto is to lower my expectations. I find my general disappointment comes from expecting things to be a certain way instead of being realistic and rolling with life's changes. Take care of your teeth. This is the only set you're ever going to have and you don't want to neglect them and mess them up like I did. I've got crap tons of fillings which don't last forever and need replacement. A filling isn't as good as the real thing and filled teeth can break. Requiring crowns. I have two and it sucks. Brush and floss thoroughly every single day without exception. Hell, get an electric toothbrush, see the dentist regularly, ditch the sugary drinks. I was a raging alcoholic in my 20s and thought I would never recover from it. I never found a real job using my first degree or my masters. Part of it was because I was always drunk. Part of it was the job market at the time. I went back to school in my 30s and found something I like a whole lot more. Now, I'm married, nearly 10 years sober, and have a great job. My point is, if you end up on the wrong path or don't like where you are, there's always time to turn around and change it. Too many people just assume they are stuck where they are and stuck with the issues they have. I'm not sure who said it but once I read this online. Don't cling to a mistake just because you spent a lot of time making it, and I think about it all the time. Kind of relates to what you said. Yeah, that's something I learned in business school the sunk cost fallacy. But it really applies to every aspect of life. The most common one that gets people is relationships. They've been in a relationship for years that isn't healthy. But they feel they need to stay in it because of how much time they've been in it. This is so important. Thank you for the reminder. I'm glad you were able to turn things around. My point is, if you end up on the wrong path or don't like where you are, there's always time to turn around and change it. Though mainly and mostly together in mind with hope for ahead and at peace with behind. Innocence and earnest, I have to confide, I'm still not for certain I know who's inside, but that's what's amazingly freeing to try perhaps there just isn't a definite I and if I'm unhappy or troubled with me, then maybe it's someone I don't have to be, I guess you decide for how long, or how far, and if it's not working, you change who you are, if me isn't certain, and me isn't set, then changing is easy, I'm not finished yet. When I was 22. An older gentleman asked me how old I was and then told me, Chad 303, when you are twice that age, you'll be twice the man you are today. I almost considered it a slight in that moment, but time has proven him wise. Here I am, twice that age and, in my humble estimation, twice the man than I was then. I believe this chiefly because I have learned that kindness is not a weakness. Humility serves you better than pride, and cruelty is a fool's game. Also exercise, so you are not also physically twice the other man you were. This is my favorite comment in the thread. Thank you for sharing. Everything you get becomes something you have. Learn how to be happy having things instead of getting them. This is true I bought a very big piece of exercise equipment, 6 post power rack, and I just sold it even though I loved the thing. I sold it because I realized I was paying rent on it that far exceeded the cost of just selling it and buying it back later when I could actually afford to keep it. It was becoming a burden and restricting my options in life and I wanted the flexibility back. While I had it I was paying to store it and move it when traveling, paying increased rent to put it in my garage, etc. In a way everything you own ends up owning you. Make sure it is all meaningful and worth keeping around. The more you own, the more you're owned. It's not a race. Stop comparing yourself to others. Just because they did things sooner than you, doesn't mean they're happier or better. Try to start good habits. It is a little rough at first, but in a few years it will be second nature. Do this with things like cooking, cleaning, saving money and self-care. It is okay to not like someone. It is also okay to have someone not like you. 
people are going to not like you for no reason, that is okay, it's a them issue and not a you issue, don't be an A to everyone and give them reason to dislike you, but also know that you are under no obligation to put up with someone else's bad friendship, there is no shame in seeing a mental health professional, it's not a race, stop comparing yourself to others, just because they did things sooner than you, doesn't mean they are happier or better, I agree, life's not a checklist, don't try to live under other people's expectations. I grew up with girls who thought they had figured out the path to happiness. Graduate high school at 18. Marry high school sweetheart at 20. Graduate college at 22. Have a baby at 24. Finish master's degree at 25. Have more babies at 26 and 28. Complete the PhD before 30. Keep a new Mercedes and BMW in the garage, and vacation on a private Hawaiian beach twice a year. Be a sexy grandma at 50. It was craziness. To accomplish anything less than this was to be a total failure at life. Some of these girls were in constant competition with each other for years who got a better GPA, who has the biggest engagement ring, whose baby started walking first who has a flashier car, who can still wear their high school cheerleader uniform to arouse the husband when he comes home exhausted from working his high-powered job never realizing that they were miserable. Their plans for a perfect life left no time to live. Running yourself into the ground is no way to live. And even if everything could go exactly as planned, then what? Don't put yourself in ridiculous amounts of debt trying to portray a certain image. You'll spend your entire life trying to get out of the hole you dug or you'll have to declare bankruptcy. Set aside enough money to cover 3-6 months of expenses for emergencies just like now. Moreover, save now for your retirement years. It doesn't require much and if you have it taken directly from your paycheck you won't be inclined to not pay yourself first. Take care of your body. Exercise to maintain a healthy weight and good cardiovascular health. As you get older. It's much harder to maintain these. Enjoy the days of your youth without going overboard. There is nothing wrong with having a good time. Yet if you are always waking up wondering what happened last night, why you can't remember how you spent so much money or you always have a hangover, you should tone it down a bit. Don't take advice or criticism as a personal attack. Most times the people who care about you have observed behavior in you which is off-putting. Doesn't reflect who you really are or could be or would make you a more rounded person. Don't put yourself in ridiculous amounts of debt trying to portray a certain image. You'll spend your entire life trying to get out of the hole you dug or you'll have to declare bankruptcy. This a million times over. Once you get over the need to impress others it's not only freeing financially, it's so freeing emotionally as well. Live life for you. People aren't nearly as concerned with what you have and what you do as you think they are. Get a regular exercise routine going and stick to it like your quality of life depends on it, because it does. I exercised a lot in my early 20s, then stopped. After having a kid while in my mid 30s, I am trying to get back into shape and doing a lot of weightlifting. I can't believe I stopped for so many years. Find an exercise you like. I hated treadmills and bikes, but love my rowing machine because I can watch TV. I didn't really like home gyms. But I am enjoying doing an entire routine with a barbell. It is way easier to keep up exercising if you find something you enjoy, or at least don't hate. I also used a one-on-one -on -one trainer, until quarantine started, who pushed me and kept me motivated. Expensive. But it was totally worth it for me. Find an exercise you like is key but also to lower your threshold. In my 20s, I ran marathons, at some point. If I couldn't get a 30-45 minute run in, I wouldn't get out the door. Some exercise is always better than no exercise and one that you like is exercise that you'll stick with for the long term. Start saving now for your retirement. Avoid debt. Floss daily. Exercise daily. Wish this was higher up. I could have set up a percent 6 pre-tax retirement account in my early 20s. I wasted 10 plus years and now will have to work another 10 years to make up for lost time. It takes a little adjustment but 6% 10% pre-tax invested in the market will compound and add up to very good chunk of change by retirement. Plus as you move on from entry level to higher paying jobs you'll have established a healthy financial habit that you can practice until retirement and live a lot more comfortably. Tagging along with a nice anecdote to highlight the absolute importance of starting early. 
you and I decide we want to retire at 65. Fairly typical. We're both 25. I say I'm gonna start saving now. But I'm gonna stop after 10 years. You say A. Hey, I'm young. It can wait. We will assume a long term return of 5% per year. 10 years go by. I contributed $500 per month to Roth IRA. At 35. I stopped putting in. I contributed a total of $60k. You decide now is your chance. You plan to contribute as much as I did. 500 slash month. But you figure you're behind so you're gonna do it for 30 years. That's 3 decades. 3x as long as I contributed. So I contributed $60k from 25 to 35. You contributed $180k from 35 to 65. Well too bad. When we retire at 65 I have more money than you. You never caught up to me. Because you thought you could wait for 10 years. Compound interest is powerful. And I'll let my money do my work for me. Invest early. Invest often. But absolutely do it early. The biggest regret my dad has was not starting some sort of savings for retirement when he was in his 20s. He didn't start putting money into his 401k until he was 30 or so. If you don't have access to 401k, look into getting an IRA or something you can just chip something into every week or month. This whole thread is wholesome af. I'm 32 but I wish I would've spent more of my 20s listening to advice of slightly older people rather than trying to prove that I could figure it out on my own. Imagine how much energy I could've saved. Figure out what is important to you in life. A shocking amount of people never do this. The sooner you do, the better off you will be. It is important to me to be able to take care of myself and have enough left over to support those I love. If I'm doing that, it is hard to get down, or be worried, or care what other people think of me, etc. I'm still going to pursue my career, and other interests. I just don't have anything emotionally riding on their successes. At least not in relation to my own sense of self-worth. I'm not doing a fun job, or an inspiring job. I'm doing on that pays the most for the least work, for me. That's okay, because with the excess time, I can spend it with people I love. With the excess money I can help pay for my friends who didn't get to go to college to do it now. I can take time off at a drop of a hat to fly across country and help in a family emergency, etc. There is the phrase live so God can use you. I'm not religious, but I do value the idea of setting your life up so when an opportunity to do something that you care about, that matters, arises, you're in a position to do it. Figure out what you want for yourself, and what you want for others. It will make planning and achieving it easier. I'm 40. This is my input. Everyone is focused on themselves to care too much about their opinion of you. So f what they think. Social media is only an illusion. Zero debt is an amazing feeling. Think twice before dropping that down payment on that fully loaded 2020 Dream Mobile that offers nothing but looks and appreciates value quickly. Falling out of love is perhaps more powerful than falling in love. Use up all of your vacation time sick time at work. Don't lose sight of the hobbies you enjoyed as a child. They will help you live as you grow older. Family is not necessarily blood, but instead who you would bleed for. There are just as much benefits to being a night owl as there are to being an early bird. Forgive yourself first before forgiving others. Do not be a doormat in submission, but hold the door open in kindness. Took me way too long to learn number 5. I always thought not taking any time off made me a good employee. Turns out that taking time for myself and giving myself much needed breaks made me a better employee. Who knew? 8a. Do not do both. Yeah no doubt. In fact if you do both, you're doing neither because you're always tired at both ends of the day, and none of the time is quality. Family is not necessarily blood, but instead who you would bleed for. I don't think I've ever read a more profound statement. Go have an adventure of a lifetime. Don't put it off. Make plans for your money. Stay out of debt. You don't need that new car, watch, handbag etc. Material items are not worth your sanity. Have a 3-6 month emergency fund. Don't waste time on anyone who disrespects you. Have a backbone but don't be rude. Not everything needs your reaction. Find someone who you can spend endless time with. Talk about ideas not people. Above all Fouke what anyone thinks. It'll be 41 this year. Yup, stay out of debt. Unless you are buying real estate. Work hard and play hard. 
Don't get addicted to anything. Fall in love. Don't worry about things you can't change. This includes what other people think. Take care of your body watch your weight. Keep fit and protect your hearing. All the sins of youth are paid for later. I'm nearly 40 and not very happy with my life. My advice for people in their 20s would be to focus on the important stuff. That's where I failed. Don't put off life. That's where I also failed. I focused on building a solid financial base and saving a ton of money. Here I am at 40 and I'm financially secure probably for life. If I lost my job I could flip burgers and live the same lifestyle I've been living. But I also have no one in life. If I was abducted by aliens today it'd be days or weeks before anyone missed me. No one on the entire planet really knows me. I get gifts from my family for Christmas or my birthday or whatever and it's stuff that relates to things I enjoyed as a small child because that's how they know me. I never pursued any relationships for the past 20 years because I was focused on financial stuff. I can't recall the last time I went on a vacation that wasn't visiting my grandparents. At my age I will probably never be married and will probably never be a father like I want to be. I'd give up all the financial security and career success I have to have someone I love here in quarantine with me. I have fed up my life and I know it. Don't ignore relationships, homie. If you are financially secure and know what you want, go get that thing now. Who cares that you're 40? This, it sounds like his depression is talking. 40 doesn't mean life is over, hell. It's not even halfway there yet, and even if it is that's still an entire life of time that he's already spent in which he can redefine everything. That's fine amazing. I personally know plenty of people who married after 40 and are very happy. Don't fool yourself. I am 40 years old and I have 3 pieces of advice for anyone in their 20s. Except that perfection doesn't exist. Your relationships will have problems. Your car will break down. Someone else will anyways have a better phone a newer car, or a bigger house than you. No matter where on the social ladder you stand, constantly chasing perfection will keep you permanently stressed. That doesn't mean you should not try to better your life. Just know that if you expect perfection you will never be satisfied. Pay attention to your diet and health. I have been working out at least 4 times per week since my mid-twenties. I am fitter, healthier and look younger than almost everyone else my age. Don't stop doing the things you love. Even though I have a wife, kids, job etc, I still make time to play video games, draw, write stories, read comics, play basketball, listen to music, etc. There is no reason to become a miserable old bastard, yes to all your points, but very much to number 3. Don't let anyone tell you you're too old to enjoy something. We all grow out of hobbies, but the things that give you joy now, will very possibly always give you joy. Don't forget that feeling, and sure, when you get married and start a family, you're not going to have the time for all night gaming anymore, but that doesn't mean you can't do your hobbies at all, or even start new ones. When I was mid 30s and knee deep in a couple of toddlers, I decided I wanted to learn how to draw, I really needed something for me, and a pencil and paper were easy to put down if I had to kiss any boo-boos or feed my kids. This has led to a bunch of different art medium stained glass. Linacuts, papercraft, and a source of joy, accomplishment, curiosity and friendships for me. You sound like an awesome person. I'm only 19 but I'm sticking to these three for sure.